last guy got to a lucky chair last night. So again, I'm kind of reviewing as I do this. This is kind of tight and you know, you can't, you can't get in. So I stretch the lockdown, get in front of his face, get my blade in front of the, the neck. Maybe I push him up a little, get a little bit more space, little more elbows come in. Bubble, I go right to here, picking him up like a baby. Okay, whip up, come around. I try, but he spalls the leg. I go to electric underhooks. And now once I'm here, as I roll, I'm gonna drop and I'm gonna start whipping the lockdown towards the left. I don't have the toes. So we're just gonna take the leg and I'm gonna bring my left hand in between. See this elbow? In between, now my elbow's strong. Like if he comes down with his weight, you can feel that. Like this is a support, it's keeping him up. So if you try to, try to get back to where you were, it's, it's hard, right? See, I lift you up. Now I'm gonna stiff arm that armpit and bring this leg all the way to my shoulder up here as I wrap tight, okay, around here. Now I can go to a lock. This palm should be down, this one. Like you don't want to lock like this. This is so. If I was locked like this, this would be the active active pulling arm, like this. Since this one's the active pulling, I want to make it tight. You want your radius like this, and squeeze, and then I'm gonna extend the lockdown. Okay, see what I'm doing with my feet. At the same time, I pull and I back arch in order to get the sub. And I can't quite get him, just barely at the end. I barely got him. Sometimes you need more. You guys can practice getting up on the elbow, locking, and then now I'll kind of drive it into the mat, big chest, and I'll stretch. And I'll get a little bit more right there. Some opponents are too flexible for this move. And if they're too flexible for the move, we can always use this just to get up. Because once I hike this on the shoulder, I can get up, post, I still have the lockdown. Okay, now it's your choice. I'm gonna go cradle here. Of course, some opponents will block the arm with the right hand and it'll be hard. You might have to do some little, you know, swimming inside to get to his neck. Sometimes you can submit him with the cradle. Sometimes you're just gonna let go. Take your right leg off, pass the guard, stay with the cradle. Make it tight so the guy can't extend the, the leg. Hold him up tight and then I always get the best advantage I can get with my cradle. I don't just let it go right now. If I let it go, he's gonna start defending. See that, he's gonna start escaping. So when I have a guy in a deep cradle, I'm gonna keep the cradle and then I'm gonna kill the hips and then now his right elbow can be in but I'm gonna take it out. See, I took his right elbow out. Now with his right elbow out and I still have the cradle, I'm gonna get every advantage I can so that by the time I let go, I'm ready to go on the next move, okay? So I wanna expose his elbows so I can attack from there. You're gonna do real dirty shit. You know, you're not going to, but not in our school, not in our class, but let's say I was here and you wanted to drive your chin in his eye socket or something like that, you could try to do that stuff, you know? You step off to the side, you could try to drive your shoulder, get his elbow out, you could put a knee on stomach. So you could try to submit him like this. But again, these are kind of dirty types of tactics. Still, you could use it. I'm not against you using it, but I don't want anybody to get hurt. So there is a point where some of the moves get dirty. If it's an MMA fight, you can hold the cradle and knee the shit out of his ribs, okay? You can knee his ribs. He'll have to pull his right knee up to try to defend. But you see how I kill your hips right here? And then I knee your back. You can block with your right. Yeah, right there. And then now with your right hand down, I can try to get my knee over it, staple it down. You see how I got it stapled? Now as I release, I'm going right into other moves while something else is controlled, okay? One more time. I know it's a long, long list. 
but let's make it shorter. Jaws of life, okay, double unders, whip up, electric underhook, so as I try to get up, roll underneath, push his base, here, get this around me, electric chair, try, uh, I can't get you Alex, and plus with my jack shoulder, I can't put enough stake on it. Uh, that's about all I got for Alex. Alex, big boy. Let's go on top. Sometimes you guys want to pass this way. You can go into what's called stoner control, or I can just step off and pass here and get to the side control. There's a couple of different avenues once you get the sweep so that you can go straight from the, the sweep right into a guard pass to side control. Okay, he's flexible and he's lanky, okay? You're gonna get different results with different people. Again, uh, do your best. I'll, I'll go around and I'll help you out. Let's go, ready? Okay. Guys, this is all, all the Eddie Bravo series. Um, I may miss some of the 10th line of details, but for the most part, it's really good, solid stuff. It'll, it'll help you, it'll work, work for you. Um, I believe in it a lot. And then uh, I absolutely love stoner control. So when we get to stoner, uh, we'll go back over it. I know I've done it before, but um, I think it's great for MMA. Uh, it just hasn't been seen yet. There's not enough guys working on it. We need more people working on this so that we can see more of it in professional MMA. So get out there, work that lockdown and get that electric chair, all right? Like, share, subscribe, comment down below. I'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.